Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for March 10th through 16th. This week I read three books, I watched one movie, I watched one show, and I listened to two books. Slight change from what I told you was going on last week when I told you where I would be this week. I told you that I would be visiting the island of Guernsey, and then by the time I saw you again I would be back in France, and that hasn't occurred. It seems that this time of year there's only two ferries off the island, and on Friday it was too rough for it to run, so we are still here until tomorrow, which I am not complaining about because this island is beautiful, and I've walked around a significant portion of it. Also, I really love that I have this window to film in front of, it's great, with the exception of the fact that there's like more than half a dozen construction lads setting up to do something right outside the window. So we're gonna try to film and get this done before they start doing whatever loud thing they're about to do. The first book that I read this week is Heartbreak Boys by Simon James Green. This is an author I've wanted to read from from ages, but I can never find his stuff while I'm in North America. So when we wandered into a Waterstones on Jersey, I was like, let's see if I can find this author. I could, I picked it up, I enjoyed this. This one is written from the point of view of two different boys that go to the same high school and they are both dating people. One of them, Jack, is very flamboyant, very much out, very much very gay, and very proud to be gay, and his boyfriend seems a little bit hesitant about this, but like, they seem to be in love and all that type of stuff, and they're going to their prom. The other perspective is one of Jack's previous friends named Nick. He's much more reserved, much more quiet, and he's actually in the closet, and he has to give a speech at prom, so he decides to come out during that speech so that he can actually, like, announce the fact that he's been seeing this other person quietly. That all sounds lovely, but it does not go very well and it ends up that both of these boys have their hearts broken that night and then they basically get into an Instagram battle with their exes to see who is doing better after this breakup. And it takes place during a road trip around England, which makes me very amused because obviously I'm not exactly on a road trip because I don't have an old caravan, but I am doing a lot of traveling around this area-ish. Like I said, I had a lot of fun. I also enjoyed the parallels to the whole being online and social media aspect that Nick's mother was going through on Facebook, which just amused the heck out of me because obviously that is the older person's version of Instagram and Snapchat and whatever the youngins use. And overall, I'm very glad I found this and was able to actually finally read from this author. Then, because Jean recommended them in a recent video of hers, I decided to pick up all of the volumes of Lock and Key from my local library's digital collection, and I read the first two volumes. So I read Welcome to Lovecraft and Head Games. This one is a horror graphic novel and I know it's been adapted, I believe, on Netflix, so eventually after I've finished reading the volumes, maybe I'll watch the show and see what the differences are. But essentially in the first volume we're following these kids who just had something extremely traumatic happen in their home life and they're ending up having to move across the country to live in this completely different place for reasons. And we're seeing flashbacks between what happened at the beginning of summer and what's happening now that they've relocated and all of those things. It's very graphic, it's very bloody, it's very interesting, and the youngest of these children actually finds some interesting things out about the house itself and what is possible when you find certain keys. In the second volume of the series, the whole keys aspect is played with even more because certain things that happened in the first book obviously carry on into the second book, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. There are four more volumes. I have all of them checked out from the library, which is just fantastic. I love that I can travel and still use my library. And also yesterday, as a side note, we found one of the public libraries here, and it was beautiful. We just wandered around looking at cute things. It was just absolutely lovely and I took a bookmark because it's also really cute and yeah I was just very excited to be there because it just makes me feel so much better to be around books I'm sure that some of you can relate the one movie we watched this week is a movie that I knew I would have to watch while I was on Guernsey because I read the book that it's based on in my early 20s and uh, it's basically the reason why I know this island exists and uh, some of you might be able to guess what that is based on the only book you can probably think of that has Guernsey in the title, and that's the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This one is a World War II book turned into a movie about these people on Guernsey 
warns you during the German occupation how they were out one night and they were stopped by the Germans because they were out after curfew and they had to lie and say that they were part of this book reading society. And when they were told to name what the society was called because it wasn't in the list of approved societies, they kind of mashed some things together because some gin had been had and also they had pig and they're not supposed to have access to pigs at this point because the Germans took them all. And basically this whole thing came out. Well after that and after the war is done, one of these people is actually writing to somebody else in London because he found a book that had her name in it and is wondering if she could pass on the name of any bookstores where he might be able to buy something from London. And they start up this correspondence and essentially she is actually a writer and she ends up actually going there because she's just so fascinated and she wants to know what happened to certain members of the society. It's good, it definitely falls into some tropes that some people might not like. Also when mentioning uh, to the local cafe that we obviously had to watch this while we were here, it was pointed out to us that a lot of it was actually filmed in Cornwall, which is just such a shame because the island itself is basically a character in this because it's absolutely beautiful. And I can tell you that because I've walked around a significant portion of it. It's absolutely gorgeous here, but it's really weird that they decided to film those parts mostly in Cornwall. Just strange. Obviously not unheard of, a lot of things are filmed near where I live that are definitely set not where I live, but it happens and it's just weird. As for the show we watched this week, we finished the first season of Taskmaster New Zealand, we watched the entire second season of Taskmaster New Zealand, and then we watched the first two-parter of Champions of Champions, which is the first five champions of the original Taskmaster coming together for a two-parter episode to see who will be the champion out of all of those champions. Essentially, instead of doing an eight to ten episode run, they just do two episodes, put the scores together, for that and somebody is crowned champion of champions which I didn't know was a thing until we ran out of New Zealand and I went oh what's this and it's in a playlist on their YouTube channel but it's out of order and that annoys me so I had to kind of do some googling to figure out how to watch these episodes. Not much I can say about Taskmaster that I haven't said before I really enjoy it in particular in the second season of New Zealand I really enjoy David his laughter is just so infectious and he's just so fun to watch because his reactions are so extreme and so joyful often and he just seems like a genuinely nice guy so I was very very amused by him and then also all the rest of the cast as well. While we were still in Jersey we actually took advantage of the bus system there which I highly recommend if you ever go to Jersey get yourself a bus pass and just take random buses. I particularly suggest taking bus 22. Just stay on the bus the whole time, the whole time it goes and the whole time it comes back to the terminus because it is a beautiful ride. In any case, while we were doing this on various different bus routes around Jersey, we were also listening to audiobooks, and I listened to Nothing Burns As Bright As You. This is a short book about these two girls who go to high school together and their relationship. Because they have this problem labeling it, they know they're the best of friends, they also know they're friends with benefits, they also know that it's like sticky if they were to ever actually date, but they should really be dating, but they're not really dating, and it's just this whole teenage angst really built up thing that's going on with them. And it feels feels just so lyrical because it's told in these different flashbacks to X amount of days before the fire and you're just trying to figure out what happened at this particular fire and what the repercussions of their actions might be. It's intense, it's first love intense but turn it up to a hundred and I really enjoyed the writing of it. The other book that I listened to while walking around Guernsey that I highly recommend and is probably going to be my favorite book this month because I really enjoyed it was The Weight of Blood. Going into this, I just knew I really liked Tiffany D. Jackson's work. I think I also knew it was horror, but I don't think I knew anything else other than that. The most important part obviously being that this is a reimagining of Carrie by Stephen King and it's way better and it's it's just so good. Our main character in this one is this girl who grew up pretty sheltered until the age of 12 she was actually homeschooled and then something happened in her past that made it so that CPS got involved and she was actually sent to school and when she was sent to school she was seen as the really weird new girl and nobody really stuck up for her, was nice to her and obviously she was bullied quite a bit. There's also this really big secret that her father has forced her to keep and that's the fact that her mother was black so she's biracial but everyone thinks she's white. However, he also forces her, among other things, every day to check the weather and if there's more than a 20% chance of rain she has to stay home from school because if her hair gets wet 
everyone will know her secret. Obviously being the beginning of a reimagining of Carrie, her hair clearly gets wet at the beginning of this. That's the inciting incident in this version of it instead of the inciting incident of her getting her period in the showers, which was the inciting incident in the original book. And it goes from there. This one is also told in multiple perspectives, so we get multiple different narrators in the audiobook, and I absolutely adored that. This also has a podcast element because there's these people looking back at what happened in this small town and the strange supernatural things that are reported to have occurred. And they're trying to figure out what actually happened and whether or not Maddie, the person at the center of all of this, actually survived this situation. I really enjoyed this and there were points where I was just walking in an idyllic countryside and just like yelling at certain characters because they're absolutely horrible people. Just trust me, I don't think I've given anything other than five stars to a Tiffany T. Jackson and this one definitely also deserves the five stars. I absolutely adored this reimagining and just as itself, if you've never read Carrie, if you don't know anything about that, you can read this, still amazing, but if you've read the source material, you can pick out little things and be like, ah, yes, I see where this parallels, but you don't need to know that backstory to see how amazing this is. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!